Hey, what's up, guys? Um, so welcome to another screencast on OpenShift. Uh, so moving on, uh, basically continuing from isolation. Um, I actually went ahead and duplicated uh, because I'm using a VM. So I cloned my existing node and I call it um, OpenShift Node Two, so that we have two nodes ready. Uh, the reason why I did that and because of the flexibility of having a VM, um, all the packages have already been installed uh, from the previous node. So for now, we just have to tweak it to work with the node uh, with our broker installation. Um, in this video also we're going to cover the concept of uh, districts and um, basically we're going to configure the two profiles of the small and the medium profile like I, like I mentioned and probably discuss best practices of um, how to scale your um, kind of how to set up your districts and when to use districts and how many nodes to put in a district and, and stuff like that. Okay so I have the uh, node 2 here uh, so first thing we want to do basically is to kind of tweak it to match uh, the settings for node 2 so I'm going to go ahead uh, into the OpenShift directory first thing we want to ensure is the node.com file uh, points to the right public IP address so I already have the IP address for uh, this node set to 22 and the broker remains the same okay and the external interface here which is if still uh, remains the same uh, so for now basically that is all we need to tweak here in this in, uh, in this file uh, and also if you're wondering I've already added the uh, this node to the DNS so uh, it resolves via DNS uh, from if you remember previously we talked about how we separate or we kind of remove uh, we, 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 we send the DNS information to our dedicated DNS infrastructure. Uh, Alright, so uh, watch that video to kind of listen to what I did there. Alright, so um, after tweaking this, um, that's for the node. Now the next thing we want to do in this case is to uh, edit the resource uh, limits.com file. Uh, this basically tells uh, the system uh, the kind of resources that this node can provide so this is node 2 so this will serve our premium uh, profile so let's go ahead and edit the resource um, limit file uh, one thing I also want to make sure uh, at least you note is this part here uh, we have to kind of restart all the services so I'm going to go ahead and uh, log it here so let's remove that and need to update this to say it will be 193 uh, restart all right so uh, back to our file uh, the first thing we want to do here is to go to the node profile we're going to call it medium and the quota in this case um, this is the file system quota I can see 80,000 and uh, the block size for the storage so in this case this is going to be the, um, the storage and uh, if you're wondering uh, what to do here? Uh, we want to give it. So I'm going to use calculator here. What I want to do is I want to give it um, for the medium size. We want to give it about three gigs. Um, and I guess I just need to create some random numbers uh, and for the demonstration six. Um, so uh, basically, if you notice here, it says uh, you know, one block. It's equal or equivalent to 1024 bytes. So in this case, you can see that it's one gigs because it's 1024 by 1024. Uh, binary binary math guys so I'm going to multiply this multiply by 1024 uh, this should give us 1 gigs and I'm going to multiply this by 3 and this should give us 3 gigs uh, 3 gigs so we'll update this value here and we're going to say that uh, 3 gigs here now for the um, usage limit here we have the max uh, the max active gears uh, the max active gears is basically the uh, amount of gears the um, sort of like the maximum active gears that we can have in this resource uh, per uh, you know sort of so you can see here that we are here you see without no without over commit um, there is a guideline for you to follow uh, so it's your total system memory uh, by, uh, subtracting one gigs for the system usage and maintenance and divided by the uh, memory limits you want to specify in bytes 
so in this case we want to uh, specify that the medium gear will have uh, about one gigabyte of, uh, of memory and if that's going to be the case then we as we know that uh, the total um, memory on this system is four gigs and four gigs divided by uh, subtracted by one gig uh, will give us three gigs and three gigs divided by one gig will be three so in this case um, we're just going to go ahead and specify here that uh, our max maximum active gear here is going to be three uh, so anyway like this is still demonstration safe this is tutorials um, I would suggest you go to the uh, performance tuning guide on the Red Hat um, website uh, as regards to setting up or calculating these values um, there's also a rule of thumb um, I would suggest you use that so let me give you an example actually to know exactly what this will look like or what this means you see assuming you have let's say uh, about 7.5 gigabyte of ram uh, let's say on your node and and this ram is available to you again and you want to uh, ensure that this node will give um you know will serve um this node will serve gears with about uh, 512 megabytes of, of, of ram so with this in mind your maximum active gears will now be the total um, number of memory in this case which is going to be um, in this case going to be you know um, 7.5 gigabytes uh, divided by 512 megabytes and uh, which will give you about 15 years that's just an example um, so but what I just told you right now is um, uh, kind of including the over commit um, value here so if you notice we did not subtract the one gig from the 7.5 gigabyte um, so in this case if we were to apply the same concept I just told you earlier then this should be um, the total number of the memory divided by memory limits and bytes so it should be like 4 uh, for now, I think we can go ahead and leave it at four. Uh, this is for demonstration purposes, and um, of course, the um, no overcommit active uh, enforces maximum active gears in a more stringent manner than normal. Um, of course, it adds over here to the gear creation, so you only need to set true when needed. Uh, anyway, so like in the case of enforcing single tenancy on a node, so for instance, you have a whole tenant on one node. Uh, anyway, uh, so. Like I said, I don't waste so much time here uh, trying to explain what these are, uh, but please feel free to check the, um, the guide for uh, for setting this up, All right? So uh, the next thing we want to do here, as uh, you can see, the total bandwidth for Libra and the um, the total uh, you know bandwidth allocated to one user. So I'm just going to up this to about four Mbps and uh, leave everything as is. And the next thing we want to tweak here is these two values here for the swap memory and then the memory limit in byte. As you can see right now, the memory limit is set to 512 megabyte. Uh, but like I said, I want us to up this to about one gigs. So if we want to do this, um, as usual, uh, just remember that we we're going to use the 1024 uh, by 1024 uh, value here. So this will give us the value here in um, in megabytes. Remember, we have this value in bytes. So uh, this is already in megabytes and we uh, as you can see here uh, the value 53 um, if you take this value for instance and paste it here and divide it by 1024 uh, and divided by 1024 you will see that you have 512 megabyte all right so in our own case we need to make it one gig so uh, what we need to do here is to uh, take 2024 and multiply it three equal places and this will be our value of one gigs so just going to go ahead and modify this okay and uh, we can take this value here and add it to um, you know here we can say 1024 by 1024 by 100 okay and this value here should be the value for you know our swap memory here so I'm going to uh, use this and this should be one gig and this will be uh, one gig plus 100 uh, megabyte of swap all right so uh, for now for this tutorial I think this is enough for our resource limits so I'm going to set that up and since we are in the resource uh, limits uh, file here let's go and modify the same thing for 
about the small gear uh, at, by default actually this is a small um, profile so uh, instead of uh, modifying this we're going to allow this to use one gig of storage and the default uh, just want to make some few tweaks so for instance I can um, upgrade this to 3 and leave this as is or I can change it to 5 to 12 uh, if I want and the next thing I want to do here is to also ensure that our max active gear is set to you know the number of memories we want to provide so in this case um, since we're using 512 uh, megabyte of, of, of RAM um, we're going to convert um, sort of like 4 gigs and 4 gigs is going to be 1024 by 1024 by 1024 and uh, we're going to divide this by 512 megabytes of RAM so this will be um, divided by you know uh, 512 okay uh, all right so we're going to have eight uh, on this machine so eight active gears um, anyway here so go ahead and save that now the changes will not take effect until you restart the services in the order I mentioned um, earlier uh, in this case you want to restart the service in this order so uh, please feel free to kind of uh, copy all this and paste on each of the nodes okay so uh, ensure that we have that running on each of the nodes and once we do that then um, sort of like we need to go and update our broker to tell it that uh, hey we have two different nodes that have two different gears uh, one thing I also want to make sure um, we do on node 2 before we continue is to kind of just double check which is a good um, um, sort of like a good habit just run the OO diagnostics tool to ensure that um, we don't have any errors on node 2 we've already checked that node 1 previously passed with no errors uh, so let's uh, allow this run through so that uh, if there is any errors then we can catch it okay so we can see that we have uh, something logging on the uh, right so on the interface so in this case I think we can go ahead and um, uh, kind of skip this since we fixed the at zero um, errors we have previously all right so uh, as soon as it finishes then we are going to go into the broker configuration file and update the valid gear sizes uh, tell it the you know default maximum gears for a new user and of course the default gear size for you know a new uh, newly created or you know uh, it defaults to a particular gear in this case okay so uh, the test run and you can see we don't have any errors apart from the two warnings so in this case I'm going to solve the problem for this warning um, okay and once we've done that we can switch to you know the broker and the open shift directory here you can edit the broker uh, the file so uh, here you can see that the valid gear size is uh, in this case is set to small so but you know you can just add comma separated list of uh, supported gear sizes now the default number of gears to assign to a new user so in this case we're going to be very conservative so uh, let's just say we're going to give um, every user a maximum gear of about six or eight um, you know here you can just tweak the values now the default gear capabilities here um, in this case so we can tell it that uh, the user will have a small and a medium profile uh, a default gear size for a new gear so this would be small uh, of course makes sense all right so um here we're going to uh, you know kind of uh, go through and see if there's something we need to update um this might not be necessary but um i already have a host that i'm using as my um, router host name all right so here you can see that uh, allow hr applications which is set to true and allow uh, multiple HA proxy on node of course um multiple for a given application can spawn up on the same machine so it depends on um, your use case so as for you know in, in our own case here um, this really doesn't really matter uh, right so go ahead and leave this as is 
thing um so uh, we can actually sort of like create a, a a default user but we need to make sure that we restart the openshift broker service okay so this is just to ensure that it has picked the changes we've, um, we've created now the next thing we need to do here is to kind of um, activate districts uh, sort of like we enable uh, the use of districts and to do that we need to actually modify a plugin um, so in the broker so in the plugins that the directory we're going to modify the uh, M collective plugin and in this case you can see here that um, you know um, the district enable set to false so we want to turn that to true and the district is required for app creation so uh, we're going to turn this to true and no profile is enabled uh, we need to set this to one to enable that right so uh, once we do this uh, we need to also just uh, to double check we need to restart the, uh, the broker so service um, so we can shift broker uh, restart Okay, um, so the next thing we need to do here is to kind of create um, the different profiles. All right, so as different districts. So to do that, we're going to use the OO admin. I can see different, um, you know, different commands here, uh, but this is the one we want to use. So admin CTL district, and if you just press that, you can see the different, um, it's going to list all the different configuration options. Um, what I want to do in this case is to, um, you know, okay, so no districts created yet. Um, for some reason, it didn't give me the option. All right, so anyway, so I'm going to use this. Um, I'm going to create this using the dash C option and specifying what I want to do. So I want to create um, a new node with a name. I will need district with a name. So we're just going to call this maybe a um, small district. And uh, in this case, we need to tell it uh, what um, kind of what profile to assign to this district. So in this case, we're going to tell it to use a small profile. Uh, so it's going to go ahead and create this district for us, and uh, we're going to expect the JSON output. Okay. So if you get this, it means it's successfully um, created. We created a district, and I'm going to create one for the medium. Uh, district so let's let's just rename this so we're going to create two districts here uh, so we're going to have one district for small profile and one district for you know uh, medium profile all right so uh, it looks like it's successful now the next thing we need to do is to ensure that we, we we assign a particular node to a district and of course the node will come with a profile uh, like we mentioned so um, just to be sure I want to make sure that uh, on our node, uh, on our broker, you can see the two uh, hosts. Uh, ensure that you do this so that you can, uh, you know that the nodes uh, can be reached. Um, once you do that, uh, we're going to use the same command uh, with some few modifications. So here we're not creating that. We're just adding, uh, we're just adding a node. And in this case, we use the dash i option to specify that we want to add a particular node. So for the medium node, we know that it's going to be node two, right? So it's going to go ahead and add the going to go ahead and add the node in this case so you can see that the node has been created successfully uh, i'm going to go ahead and you know kind of update this so that we can add node one uh, but we know that node one uh, uses a small profile and uses a small district uh, like we did before Waiting for this to complete. All right, so we've created uh, the, our districts. We've kind of assigned the profile to them, and we've actually added the nodes that will be responsible for each of the districts in our own case. All right, so um, this this is very good, um, at least for now, for our demo sake. This is a good implementation, and uh, I just want to use this opportunity to say one or two things um, uh, before we continue. Actually. Um, I notice I've been saying a lot of stuff about district, but I haven't really told you what district means. Uh, district defines a set of node hosts within which gears can be reliably moved. So in this case, uh, it's just a set of node hosts within which gears can be reliably moved 
to manage the resource usage of this node. So, of course, we I mean, need to keep that in mind. Uh, this script will help us to kind of isolate different gear profiles, um, in this case, gear sizes. Uh, and of course, if you're, if you're uh, concerned about managing the, um, you know, the, the gear capacity, uh, I recommend you check out the you know, Red Hat documentation on um, managing um, your gears. Uh, but one thing I will add to that is that districts and node hosts have two different capacity limits for the number of gears allowed. So in this case, districts have a fixed pool of UIDs. Um, and for instance, um, you can see on the screen here that the maximum UIDs here, of course, um, you know, 6 ID, uh, 6,000. Um, so can that currently contain 6,000 gears, uh, if that makes sense. All right, so uh, what that means in total, I mean, all a district will contain in this case is a maximum of 6,000 gears. Uh, so what happens if you're going above 6,000 years? Well, you know, um, you need to be sure that uh, you can't go beyond that, okay? And the maximum number of active gears allowed per node is specified in the max active gear value like we've mentioned. And, you know, it, of course, it defaults to 100. That's a theoretical value. Uh, but, of course, determining the maximum active gear limit involves, you know, a certain type of experiment. So your system administrators needs to you know, kind of experiment with some of these values to, 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 to see how it fits, you know, into, you know, into your deployment. Anyway, but the safest way to calculate the limit is to consider the resource most likely to be ex exhausted first. So what are those resources that needs to be exhausted first? In this case, it should be, you know, like your RAM, your CPU and all that. So make sure that um, those are the things you consider best, um, first before you calculate, you know, your, your capacity. All right, so, um, Anyway, one thing you need to also note is that uh, it is important not to put too many nodes hosts in a district. Uh, just because you can put it, um, nodes in a district doesn't mean you want to put um, as much node as you can. Uh, because once the district UID pool is exhausted, then the node in that will stop to receive gears, and that means you um, kind of waste the capacities um, on your uh, of your machines or your nodes uh, because they won't actually have any gears assigned to them. So I mean, you just have bunch of nodes that don't have gears and in this case you're wasting resources um, as most of you will agree anyway so um, I mean of course um, this this video has covered a lot of stuff we've seen how easy it is to create districts how easy it is to kind of add the districts and assign it to a profile and then kind of add a nodes to them um, in the next set of screencasts we're going to cover you know, you know other parts of this uh, we're going to Kind of try to create users and try to test the web console and to see if we can actually um you know kind of communicate uh, with the broker api and see how to talk to the different ones all right so if you have any comments suggestions please feel free to drop them in the comments below um if you have any um suggestions particularly uh, please uh, feel free to bring them um i mean i mean if can, there's a way we can make all this delivery of the videos better than we can um and uh yeah so um, I hope you enjoyed this and see you in the next bit. Uh, thanks a lot.